after you guys have done special activity, you have done it with whom? On your own? Okay. And which book? Griffiths and Schultz. Griffiths and? Schultz. Schultz, okay. And you? I read a bit. Schultz. Uh, like the first few chapters or not? Uh, first few chapters, yes. First few chapters? Do you know what I know what I know what you 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 know you guys also in the QFT class? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, you can see that other than the two of you, the rest of these guys have taken that course, which I'm taking as prerequisite now. Okay. So I will mention, let's say, what I'm thinking that you already know. And I'm definitely not going to go over the first few chapters of Schultz. Okay. For example, I'll start today. Um, well, uh, I was going to start today. Uh, I'm not sure now. But, but with the tensor calculus. Okay. And so, you guys done uh, correlating for me? Okay. Um, okay. And uh, okay. Uh, and a little bit of uh, field theory as well, classical field theory. Okay. Uh, <laughs> mm. So um, let me start with the books. So um, and there are some really excellent books on uh, GR. Actually, there are too many of them, and so it's just very difficult to choose between them. But since for our for us the choice is very easy because we've already been following shows. And it's a book that's been written exactly at an undergraduate level. So we're just going to follow the book, uh, at least uh, until we reach uh, uh, cosmology. Maybe the cosmology. I mean, it will depend on you guys. If, you, if we have time enough and you guys really want to get into it, we can sort of choose a, cos I mean, a good cosmology book. Or there's a chapter on cosmology in the same book, and we can just go through that. And uh, most probably, if we've already done uh, black holes and, uh, 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 hey, how are you? Fine. You better now? Okay. Um, let's see, do I remember the names? Uh, yeah, some of them. I don't know Okay. Uh, so if we've already done by that time black holes and uh, 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 gravitational waves, um, then we most probably not have time, too much time for cosmology. Right? But I really want to touch on all of these things because really what happens is that in these courses, uh, if you guys have not done like SR and stuff, so half of the time is just spent on taking care of tensor vectors and SR in the space-time location. And since we've already done that, you see, we've already done that, so we'll be able to then finish this book, which is a good thing. Um, let's see, but in by the end, with Eva and stuff, we'll sort of start crying. Let's <laughs> see what, where we get to. OK, anyhow. Um, but I really wanted to mention some of the books. OK? so. If you guys really want to warm up to the subject and you want something to read books and read on and stuff like that, then there is a book by Wheeler, Space Time Physics. Okay? Um, uh, there's, there's another book which I think will not, I mean, will not like it. It's ABC of Relativity by, by I hope. Uh, Russell, I guess. Russell. So anyhow, uh, then there's um, uh, then there are these three books 
that we'll be using for our course. Uh, so the main book is going to be Schultz, and then there is there is an excellent book by Sean Carroll. Uh, it's this book here, and so uh, if you want to sort of uh, get at a little higher level than this, then Sean Carroll is the book for you guys. And so uh, we'll just basically pick and choose between uh, these two books. And then there is this sort of everything relativity you can find in that book, everything. I, I don't know what the Bible of relativity or whatever. It's an MTW, Mr. Thorne and Reader. Um, the book's name, title is uh, uh, Gravitation. It's simply Gravitation. And so these are three books that we'll be using, but mostly Schultz and Carroll. And then uh, at some point in time, if you choose to go into this direction, um, that is fundamental physics, then you you would have to confront Wall and Hawking and Ellis. Okay, so these are two really uh, books that if you've done them, if you've done their problems, you can say that you have done Chia. Okay. And so, uh, uh, but but those are graduate texts. Second, the last one. Wall and Hawking and Ellis. Uh, the titles are Hawking Alice's last, uh, last, the last scale structure of space time, and Wall is all is what? General relativity, I guess. Yeah, yeah. same title. General, or, or just general relativity. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. So. Uh, Yeah, so uh, I was going to treat this as an, not this, but QFT mostly, as an advanced course, and uh, which basically means that you do a couple of presentations and uh, you write a course, and that's what basically grading is. But then, uh, uh, but then there were too many students, and so uh, presentations are just going to take a very long time, and so change that. Um, and so now uh, the grading in this course at least is going to be just regular. Homework 15%, quizzes 15%, and a bit and a final 30 and 40 percent respectively. But in QFT, uh, well I'll mention it in QFT class, so it's going to be slightly different. Um, and, uh, and so I've already mentioned what the prerequisites are, right? I, do you guys have any questions? Any questions? Uh, okay. Uh, Okay, so then we come to the age-old question of can we move this class to another time? <laughs> <laughs> Especially on just, just, just the one on Friday. Yes. Sir, you have to do it. If you have to do it, then you have to do it. No, you have to do it in QFT class. You have to do it in the side. I mean, if we could, uh, it might be possible to move QFT to a slot uh, like that starts at 3. And then we can move the, the GR class that starts at 3 to 11. But uh, do you guys, but, but, but the best thing would be to move it to, a, to a Thursday. So you guys free on Thursday? Yeah, are you guys free on Thursday? <laughs> 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 So, um, I, uh, this guy was telling me that there must be a slot before 3, three on right, Thursday. on Thursday. Mm -hmm. uh, before 5. Do you guys have a... Uh, before, five. A a before 5. Before 5. Before 5. 3 to 5. Between 3 and 5 there is a slot. Seminars. 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 <laughs> well, uh, uh, but you guys are free at 11, right? You guys are free at 11 on Friday? On, on Friday. Friday? On Friday? 
Yeah. And allow everybody's free? Yes. Okay, so you at least have that one slot. Are you registered for this class? Yes. Okay. Oh, I just registered. Oh, because it has a graduate code as well. Okay. But this is not going to be a graduate course. Anyhow, so, um, um, okay. If there aren't any more questions, oh, yes. Okay, so uh, this change of time will be finalized after the QFT class. Okay, because uh, uh, there is no point in moving the class to 11 if we can't move the QFT class to 3. Uh, so, okay, so, mm, so uh, there's, there's a whole chapter devoted to the discussion of the energy momentum capture in, uh, uh, in ships, okay? And we've already discussed the energy momentum capture and the conserved quantities. So I'll have a chance to discuss uh, uh, that again in QFT when I talk about no discovery, okay? Um, but then you can write the energy momentum capture for any system, right? And I'll have I have something to say about that, but I'm not going to spend too much time on that as well. Okay, so uh, what will basically happen is that I'll talk about, for example, a, uh, a perfect fluid, or let's say just dust, right? Uh, particles which are pressed in a given Lorentz frame, and and so uh, we'll just sort of construct the energy momentum tensor for that system. And that will be our uh, energy momentum, an exemplar of the energy, energy momentum. Are you also registered for this class? Okay. Uh, so, then I didn't ask you. Did you guys, you, you're not. You're also not, right? So, do you know about uh, the prerequisites? Yes. Uh, but you just showed up, right? Were you ever an answer talking to them about uh, the prerequisites? The first few chapters of shows. Yes. So, are you, have you seen them? Yes. Some of the first exercises? Chapter. First chapter. Not just the first chapter, and the second chapter is the most important. Is it, uh, vectors and tensors is the second chapter, right? Yes. Yeah, the yeah, second yeah. chapter is the most important. Yeah. Third. Third. It's, a, it's a third of the chapter. Third, third chapter, right? Third, 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 third is the most important chapter. So, okay, what? Well, what would you do then? Um, See me after the class. So, um, um, what was I saying? Uh, energy class, energy. Yeah, at the energy momentum tensor. So, so I'll have a chance to talk about the energy momentum tensor of, uh, let's say, just a perfect fluid or uh, uh, just the dust, and then we'll generalize that to a perfect fluid with pressure, uh, and that'll be that that'll be all that I'll be talking about in the energy momentum. Okay, so um, so I'm going to start with chapter. Uh, so this is uh, um, so this is chapter five, I think five point three, five point two, uh, no five point three, five point two. So this is five point two. Okay, and so we'll spend some time on this. Uh, I'd ask Rafan to ask you guys if you have already seen it, and the message that I got was that you have not, right? And so this is tensor calculus, so we'll have to do tensor. But if you have done Kerberian coordinates, uh, but you might not have done them in uh, all generality. Or whatever. So we'll do uh, sort of this. This also falls under the heading of uh, Kerberian coordinates. I think it's done in MMP2. I'm not sure if you've done that. And so, um, okay, so, so, so we'll spend some time on this, this is really important. Uh, and the reason this is important is that we'll be later we'll be talking about manifolds. And in order to talk about all possible manifolds, you have to be able to talk about all possible coordinate systems, okay? And so, uh, uh, and so the, um, A very good starting point to talk about all possible coordinate systems is let's say just take uh, a plane, 
a flat plane, R2, and let's just talk about all possible coordinate systems and how to talk about vectors in all possible coordinate systems in that setting. That's very easy setting, very easy to visualize, and then just do some of the examples. And then uh, our basic goal would be to sort of get at the covariant derivative. How do you differentiate stuff? How do you differentiate uh, tensors and vectors? Um, uh, vector and tensor fields, actually. And so, um, so that's, that's what we're trying to get at. Uh, you guys done any uh, differential geometry? You done any differential geometry? I mean, as a course? No. So you guys, you definitely should do differential geometry. Some of the people who came to me uh, asking about math, math courses, I'm not sure if I mentioned that. But you should definitely do differential geometry if you get a chance to do that. Okay. So, um, so um, how did we define vectors? You guys remember that? Something that transforms a vector. So you guys have gone from uh, uh, <laughs> magnitude interaction to something that transforms a vector, right? So that's at least one step ahead. Um, so, um, and how do, how do vectors transform? Something that transforms a vector is a, is a sort of a cyclic <laughs> thing. So how do vectors transform? Okay. So, uh, so if you, if you, so if you have R2, the canonical sort of coordinate system that you have is the Cartesian. And so it's all the ways available to you. So if you are in Rn, you don't even have to be in R2. If you're in Rn, you have, uh, uh, by the way, uh, we're not talking about the, uh, 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 what are we not talking about here, by the way? When I say R2, what are we not talking about? Uh, Minkowski space. Right? So we're not talking about Minkowski space. In fact, we're, we're not concerned with the metric here. All that we're concerned with is all possible coordinate systems. Okay? In fact, if we sort of uh, take the... Uh, 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 I'm going to have a chance to talk about the metric, uh, and we'll see that we can write the metric in any coordinate system. But that will be true for the Minkowski metric as well. Okay, so. Uh, so this is the easiest thing that we can do, right? So why can't we do one dimensional? That's too easy. <laughs> that doesn't give you anything new. Okay. So uh, so anyhow, so you always have uh, this as the canonical coordinate system. And now, so let's say that that you get you transform to something else. Let's say it's z and eta. Uh, so you go from x and y to z and eta. And z and eta, uh, uh, so if this is a proper coordinate system, it means that for each point, just like you can assign uh, 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 a, a, this? an ordered pair of numbers, real numbers, uh, this is another ordered pair of real numbers. And so for this to be a good coordinate system, what does have to happen? For each point, you should have a unique ordered pair. So it, it shouldn't be that there are two points which have the same ordered pair. You're just going to be standing there all the time? Will I? No. I have a seat there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, um, and so, so, just like you can, so, so, so we already have that here. So for each point, we have a unique ordered pair. And so this has to happen here as well. And so, uh, for each point, I can either write it like this, or write it like that, mm -hmm. right? Which means that I can go from here to here, mm -hmm. but then if this is also unique, I can come back again, mm -hmm. right? And so, uh, and, and, and so, for example, uh, if you have a position vector, right? Which is, which is a vector, let's say, uh, origin, and so this point, position vector, uh, uh, this transforms as, and, 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 uh, right? 
And now you can see, although uh, in shoots he doesn't do that, he doesn't change. What did we use to use? Lambda. Lambda was for Lorentz transformation. Now this is any coordinate transformation. So I just changed the rotation a little bit. Right? So I'm calling it L and the B now. And so, uh, what is the condition that this is a good coordinate system? Is that the determinant of this thing as a matrix should be non zero. Right? And if it's zero at any point, the coordinate system is going to be safe there. And so, so now again the question what is a vector? A vector is anything that transforms. A vector is anything which, which, which has these components which transform like the components of a position vector. So once we have the position vector we have, we know what a vector is. And so we're going to use that as a, that as a prototype we're going to say that anything that transforms like that is a position vector. Right? Okay. Uh, uh, for completeness let me just uh, write this and a beta. This is going to be, if you want to look at it as a matrix, that this is partial xz over partial x, partial uh, xz over partial y, partial eta over partial x, partial eta over partial y. Okay. And the determinant of this thing, this shouldn't be uh, 0 at any point. Now, what is a one form? You're in this class, registered? Yes. I'm already. You are already. Okay. Oh, you are uh, uh, Moises Sui? Yes. Okay. Uh, see me after the class. Okay. So, what is the one form? And so, uh, 
homework. You've done this for lambda. Now do do this for uh, uh, prove this. Okay. So we've done all of this before, right? We know all of this. Uh, are there any questions? So, so let's start with something slightly like new. So um, let's say that you have a pad in that thing, right? It's a collection of points. Uh, is there a particular reason you wrote the L on the, uh, on the other side so because of the B? I used to write it like this for lambda as well. I mean, if you wanted, you could write it on the right hand side because these are just numbers now. Right? All that I want is that, uh, that these two are together. And when, when you write it like this, then this is on the right hand side. If, you, if these were column vectors, then this would be. Okay, um, so um, I'm going to talk about curves. So um, this is a very natural thing, right? So you have, let's say, a two R2, two-dimensional plane. And so you can have a collection of points like this. That would be a part, let's say, a part that a particular particle is taking, right? Uh, and so we will call. So what is a curve? Yeah. Is it mapping from an interval to yeah? To set of points. To set of points. R two. Right. So so basically, what is happening is that, for example, if the particle is sort of going like this, you can you can give me the path as the location of both x and y, y coordinates as a function of time, right? So you could tell me what x as a function of time is and what y as a function of time is. This is actually what you do in classical mechanics. You sort of as a function for x as a function of t and y as a function of t, right? And so this is a parameter. Now you could be measured in seconds, in nanoseconds, in hours, in years, um, in, I don't know, millennia, whatever. And um, so this parameter so is up to you, whatever you choose it. But once you give a parameter, once you choose a parameter, a curve, right, a curve is just this. So you have to give a function of, let's say, so I'm going to generalize this, let's call it lambda. So this is going to be our parameter, it could be anything. Uh, and eta, which is another function, uh, and so this is the internal that we found <coughs> about, right? And so, uh, so this could be A, and this could be B. Right? <coughs> T is equal to A, and T is equal to B. And so, um, now if we change the parameter, we let's say instead of lambda, if we let's say use s, of course you should be able to write as a function of lambda, right? And so, um, so what will happen? <coughs> so you'll get, yeah, so you'll get uh, some new function. This is not derivative, this is new function, prime. And so eta, some g new function, uh, s. And so there's going to be alpha s b. Now, this is the same path, but technically we'll call it a different curve. I said, sir, S now goes from alpha to B? So, uh, so this point in R2 has not changed. 
we're trying to describe the path between these two points. This point was given by, uh, let's say, lambda is equal to A, and this was lambda is equal to B. The same point is S is equal to alpha, and S is equal to beta. Right? So alpha, alpha is just S of A. Right? And beta is just S of B. <coughs> so, so a given path is given by an infinity of curves. Right? So now, so so once you have R2, it's very natural that you talk about paths. Similarly, once you have R2, it's very natural that you talk about scalar fields. So what is a scalar field? So you take a domain, let's say all of R2, and you assign at every point a number, right? Uh, a scalar. And so that would give you a scalar field. So for an example would be, let's say, uh, if you're in a plate, and the plate is in contact with, uh, let's say, uh, ice on one side and slightly hotter object on the other side, then the temperature at every point on the plate uh, is a scale of heat. Right? So if I were to ask you, if you took a certain path, if you went from this to that, that point, let's say two very uh, uh, close by points, in, in, uh, uh, infinitesimally close, how much does the field change by? How would you calculate that? The degree of um, So, what is the gradient, by the way? By the way, we're talking about, now you, when you say gradient, by the way, the metric here is since trivial, so you can say the gradient and not be wrong. Otherwise, you would be wrong. Why would you be wrong? Well, it is given by the way, fine, uh, but not in the sense that you're saying, not in the sense that I'm, I'm asking. Uh, no, it's a one form. He's using it as a vector. Okay? And even if you used it as a vector, it doesn't give you the change along the curve. What does it give you? This direction gives you the maximum rate of change of the field at that point. Yes. And the direction gives you the max change, the, the, the direction in which the maximum change is happening. Okay. So, so, but if you, but you know how to calculate, so, so this is what I'm, this is what we're trying to calculate, right? So we're trying to calculate. So we're trying to calculate d phi by ds, right? right? And so, what is this equal to? So, what is d phi equal to? So, d phi is equal to in, uh, uh, yeah, so the coordinate system that we're using is uh, z and theta. So, this is going to be partial phi by partial xz, d xz, plus partial phi by partial theta, the eta, right? And so if you wanted to calculate this, it will just become this. Right? And now you can bring in the, uh, uh, the gradient. How? You can see the gradient there, right? Where is it? So where is the gradient? These are the components of gradient, right? Uh, it is, right? And so, uh, so basically, you can write this as d phi alpha and v. Not a very good notation, but some vector, right? So, so this is a scalar, right? This is a scalar, right? This is a one form. This must be a vector. And so, and so, this is the better notation. Okay. 
we did get to this notation in our last class. Right? Okay, uh, and so, and so, uh, that's V over the uh, 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 gradient one form over there. And so this vector V is uh, D of D by D S and D theta over D S up. S. So D and C for D S and D theta. Now there's something very, very important there. And that important thing is that this object completely depends on, on the field. Coordinates are there. The coordinates are just there in the background. You can choose any set of coordinates as you want. Once you've decided on set of coordinates, they're just there. They're just labeling the whole of R2. But this thing, the one form, and you remember the one form, the picture, the one form, uh, parallel planes, where do they come from? They come from the eco-potential surfaces of phi. Right? And so, once you give me a field, all of those are set. So as soon as you've given me a field, you have one forms, right? And so the, this one form is completely given by the field. This is a vector. It's completely given by the path, right? And so you give me all paths, all sorry, all curves, not not paths, sorry, curve. So you give me all curves, you get all vectors. You give me all fields, you get all one forms. Sir? Yeah. So vector my coordinates me depend on path because simply derivative a coordinate as a coordinate respects. Uh if you've given, given this thing, so this is coming from just by d by ds. For example, if I had chosen another parameter, let's say lambda, this would just be d and z by d lambda, this won't change. Yes, sir, we can the path with the deep bend. We have the same thing. Any path will be Curve cube, curve cube, parameter cube. Sir, coordinate system? No, coordinate system. Sir, you can do two coordinates. If you want, you can do two coordinates. If you want to transform, you can see any coordinate. It will be the same vector. So the vector is being given by the parameters and not these things. So, so when you sort of uh, talk to mathematicians, they would say d by d is the vector. So, for the longest period of time, you wouldn't understand what they're talking about. So, but that's just a vector, and uh, so d by d is the vector. So, so, so you give all. So, if this was time, if you measured in seconds the length of the vector is going to be different and if you measure in nanoseconds the vector is just going to become very large if you measure in millennia the vector will be sort of infinitesimal or whatever right so uh, so it depends on the parameter right <clears throat> okay so 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 by the way, and uh, what is this vector by the way? So this vector is tangent. Okay? You know this vector is a tangent. Uh, but all possible different parameterizations will give you all possible tangents, which are just parallel to each other, uh, but of different lengths. Right? So, so you can see, for example, if you're at x alpha, uh, x z alpha, let's say one. You can write this as xz alpha 0 plus uh, dxz by ds, right? Uh, plus, and, and 
which is 1, 1 minus 0 is 1, plus pi over term. So this would be approximately true. And so this thing is just basically the, the difference between these two coordinates. And so it just goes from 1 to 0. And if you're, so if you're going to sort of change the parameterization, the length of the vector is just going to change. So you get just all possible factors. So what the length of the vector tell you? Because uh, it's solely dependent on the curve itself. Uh, I mean, yeah, uh, uh, it's just whether or not you get all possible vectors in the same direction or not. So it's not about a particular point, and at that point, talk about a tangent. Right. And then at that, because of that single tangent, we can say there are infinite number of uh, different tangents that we can draw at that point. Okay. Yep. And that depends on the parameterization. That depends on the parameterization. Yes. And so, so the question is whether or not you get this whole one dimensional vector space or not. Okay. And so, um, so by the way, if you, uh, if you are at that point, you can look at different paths, that, uh, different curves that pass through this point, and you can see that basically you can recover the whole R2. Sari curves of Apuka Songi, Sari vectors are there. In other words, you can take any vector in your brain. You can make a curve in which you can take it. So all curves, all vectors, all vectors, all curves. So, so this is what sort of is called the modern view of all vectors. So this is a vector. And this is the one. Okay. So coming back to her question, let's let's let's. I don't think that she's satisfied still. Um, so what, what was the question that she was asking? She said that the vector is this whole thing, not just that, right? And so, it depends on the coordinates. So what was the vector? How is this definition related to our earlier definition of vector? Vector was earlier something which transformed, whose coordinates transformed, whose components transformed under a change of coordinates in a certain way, right? And you can see that, of course, this transforms in exactly the same way. Because when you change these, this is just a coordinatization or not a coordinatization, parameterization of the path. Right? It, doesn't, it doesn't know about these things. You can have any coordinate system that you want there. Right? And this just means that at time t is equal to 0, I was there, time t is equal to 1, I was there, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and so on and so forth. Right? That's what parameterization is. Right? And so, so if you were to transform this homework, show that this, this definition of the vector conforms with our earlier definition of the vector as well. Okay? So this is a vector by this definition. I said this was a vector because it took a, 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 a one form and gave us a number. So it must be a vector. Now prove that it must be true. That it does transform like a vector. Right? We can stand up a little bit. Okay, so, so what do you have to prove? You have to prove this. D by ds, alpha prime in some sense, this is lambda of L, alpha prime beta, D by D s beta. Okay? It is an operator, right? You can so a written like this. Right. Yeah. So is it just a notation that you're using? Yeah, this is just a notation that I'm using. So in this case, 
what is the operator operating upon at the moment? Like not in this way, but in the Well, this is this is how it's defined. These are the components. You have to show that these components transform like that, and then basically uh, then you can say that this transform like that. So um, you guys with us? What about you? You okay with us? Yes. All of it? I'm a bit fine. Okay. You're okay, right? What about you? I'm fine. You have to see me after the class. Okay. Saad, he can't have to see me. He can't have to see me. He can't have to see me. Yeah, 
Clarion. Aisha, Mario. Aisha. Mario. Mario. Yeah, Aisha. No? It's gamma. Gamma. What, what is gamma? Oh, that's exactly why I was asking this. You see? Uh, how can? Partial exponential. Partial exponential. Partial exponential. Okay, so we're not talking about uh, Lorentz transformations here. Mm -hmm. It's just not there. Because there is any uh, yeah, we well, just get the transformation matrix. I'm going from uh, 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 x y to this thing over there. <coughs> x z and e Okay, so this thing, the x plus partial y over partial r e y. Okay, and so this thing is cosine of theta e x plus sine of theta and similarly we can write e theta and so this is minus r sine theta dx plus r cosine theta dy by the way why is it possible that we can do that why is it possible Well, um, is it possible, right? So, you, you're labeling points by numbers, right? Order pairs. So you can use another system of order pairs. All that you have to do is make sure that this is unique and so you can go back and forth, right? And so, uh, um, but then you have basis vectors. You have basis vectors corresponding to this system and then you have basis vectors corresponding to this system. Why is it possible that there should be a relationship always uh, <coughs> so that we can write one set of basic vectors in terms of the other set? Because yeah. the basis vectors of each <coughs> coordinate system stands the entire system. Yeah, right? Everybody gets that, right? It's very simple. It's very simple. So they are basis. Any vector can be written as a linear combination of those. And so these are just vectors, just like any other vectors, right? And so, uh, so uh, this is a vector, you can write it as a linear combination of any basis, so this is a basis, so we can, we can do that, and so in, in this particular basis, they are written like this, and uh, by the way, you can go from uh, uh, x, y, you see the r theta, or any other coordinate system, right? You don't have to go via uh, uh, x and y. Okay. So this just works on any damage. You can have some other coordinate system, what do you want to call it? Gamma delta. Uh, gamma delta. <coughs> and so, so you can just write all of this stuff that we've done in terms of these two. But at some levels you either need to know what the transformations are or the transformation matrix or I mean, this will have to be given some. Once it's given, all of these things, just all of these will just fall. Anyhow, so but this is sort of the canonical system we have, and, uh, and the nicest thing about this is that the metric is trivial. Right? And so, uh, anyhow, uh, so. Similarly, we can talk about, uh, well, these are basic vectors, we can talk about basic one, right? Okay. How would you write them? Okay, what are basis one forms in X and Y? In these quarters. <coughs> Right, so, uh, yeah, so things like these and things like these, right? Yeah, so, and so, so if you know that, so, so, uh, Nadia, do you understand what I'm saying? What are the basic one forms in X and Y? 
new guys. What are the basic web problems? Like so much. No idea what you're talking about. Um, how about you? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm not going to go into You just read on that. So, uh, basically, this is dx. Just like this is uh, ex, this is dx. Right? Uh, and and the distance between these two is such that if I were to put this vector in here, this yeah. would give me this is like, this would exactly fit this. Okay? Yeah. So that uh, a contraction between these two would give you one. Okay. Uh, we define the basis. We normalize them, remember? Yeah, I mean, uh, either orthonormal basis uh, of Property that when you take the basis vector and you put them there, it, they give you one. For for one of them they give you one, and for all other they give you zero. Mm -hmm. And we did then proved that they form a basis of the whole space of one. And so they, those were a special one for just like these are special. Uh, so by, uh, by saying that we put a vector in there, you mean compression? Yeah. Otherwise, how would that picture work of two parallel planes? How would it work? So you just take a vector and then you put it inside and you see how many planes parallel does it uh, uh, fears. Right? That's what the picture was. Anyhow, um, is everybody okay with this? Why is it not? Does this relationship hold even if the basis are hard or the norm? There is not a orthonormality is a concept that comes after the vector. We've just this this just comes with the contraction. Okay? So this is just from the definition of the uh, one form as uh, 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 functions on vector space. Yeah. Sir, you can have the basis like you said, directly using the corresponding basis one form as well as using the metric. I like that with the metric line. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, as you have coordinates change, currently, it's not going to be made true. Mm. X or Y will be Any questions? Okay, so, uh, so if I, so, so I know what, yeah, I was talking about this in my so this is dx, and there's a corresponding dy here. What do we want? We want d theta and dr. Right? So this is going to so this is going to be partial uh, theta by partial x dx plus partial theta or partial y dy. Um, where did this come from by the way? The inverse transformation. And you can see that these are sort of inverse of each other. 
not exactly in Russia, but as many disease there are in Russia. So, so uh, you also said that it has come from a scale of field that lies a concentrate of them. No, these are basic numbers. Uh, no, the they are transformed differently from uh, uh, the components. The partial errors. Partial errors? Yes. Well, uh, if you have uh, uh, any sort of this thing, how does it transform? This is L alpha, so L uh, beta alpha D phi beta. That's what I've done. So the, the components of the bump with respect to... Oh, sorry, these are not the components. Sorry, sorry, sorry. This is not what I've done. So, uh, 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 so this is uh, uh, DXZ uh, alpha and alpha beta and DX uh, beta. Yeah, that's what I've done. Yeah. See, you are switching between the transformation properties of covariant and alternating vectors. Is there any specific reason for that? Yes, there are very specific reasons for this. You just showed, before that, you just showed. Those were the components. These are the basis vectors. These are the basis one transforms. They transform exactly in the opposite place so that the, uh, 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 the object itself does not transform. One form doesn't transform. One form is independent of any coordinates that you use on on, on, on R2. The components change and correspondingly basis vectors change. <coughs> or basis one forms change. Such that the combination written like this doesn't change. Now this has been the factors. And so if I were to write uh, uh, so if you have something like this, you would have d phi alpha omega alpha like this. These are basis one forms. Okay. And by the way, I don't have to actually remember any of these things. All that I can know where the uh, I mean we have just sort of lube the a, what do you call the uh, notation so much, it works on its own. You just take care of the indices, up indices should be on both sides, they should be up and down indices should be on both sides down, and it just works automatically. Right? Anyhow, so, so if I were to calculate this, And so this is going to be minus sine theta over r uh, dx plus 1 over r over sine theta theta. And similarly, the r is going to be cosine theta dx plus, um, I'm not sure if it's plus or minus sine theta. <coughs> Questions? So, so let's draw pictures. Okay. So, what are we saying? So, these were. So, for example, at this point, I say these were your. This was the e, e x, and this was e y. Right? These are the basic vectors. So um, let's draw e r and e theta. You must have drawn them in classical mechanics. Mm -hmm. right. So, I draw them. 
E R is this is any direction right out of the origin. Right. And E theta is basically a function of R. So, so, so in the direction of increasing R. R. Right? And so, and by the way, um, there is one more thing that you need to know, and that is the magnitude of this thing in order to draw it. And so the magnitude uh, basically comes from uh, the metric. And since we're not talking about the metric, so I'm just going to draw that without telling you where the magnitude is coming from. But you know what the magnitude is, right? Because you know in R2 how we calculate the magnitude of the vectors, right? Basically, it's just the square of the components at the square of it, right? And so this is all square percent of 1. So the magnitude of this is always going to be 1, okay? So, so if I were to draw it, uh, it would be something like this, okay? And e theta? In the direction of increasing theta, right? And so, uh, it's going to be like this. Now, um, uh, so this is E R. E <coughs> By the way, if you say perpendicular, there are two directions which are perpendicular to E R. So how do you choose which one? Okay, yeah. So if I were to move away, let's say here, now E R is this, but E theta is longer. longer. Right? This is not an what you call um, normalized whatever. And so if you were here, it would be like this. Whatever. Three hundred seventy. But let's draw uh, one form. Okay. So uh, for example, at this point at this point. One forms are like this, right? and like that, right? And so, uh, uh, what are? Let's let's go at this point. So at this point, what is dr going to look like? Dr. change yes. from top place to place, but dr's magnitude is going to be constant. Okay. And so, for example, magnitude of dr is 1, and that of the theta is uh, uh, r. Right? And magnitude of dr is 1 and uh, d theta is 1 over r. <coughs> Isn't it getting bigger as we go closer to r to 0? मैंने यहाँ पर ज़ूम कर लिया ना कि मैं मैट्रिक कर रहा हूँ ये वैसे मैंने लिख दिए हैं क्योंकि उनको ड्रॉ करना था इसलिए मैंने लिख दिए हैं तो जैसे e theta जैसे जैसे मैं r बढ़ेगा e theta का साइज बढ़ जाएगा हाँ फिर वो लेकिन फिर जब हम उसे e theta या d theta करेंगे तो वो मैं आपको बड़ा चाहिए ना ज़्यादा बड़ा चाहिए उसकी 
जो साइज है उसका बड़ा हो जाएगा इससे सर लेकिन फिर हम जब हम डॉट प्रोडक्ट लेंगे ई थीटा बी थीटा सो डॉट प्रोडक्ट भी करेंगे कंट्रैक्शन करते हैं सो तो हमारे पास आएगा मैग्नीट्यूड 1 हां आएगा मैग्नीट्यूड पे शो तो मैग्नीट्यूड ये डिफाइन ही ऐसे किया सर मैग्नीट्यूड हम ई थीटा और बी थीटा को दोनों को लेंगे मैग्नीट्यूड डिफाइन कर रहे हैं ना सिर्फ ई थीटा में नहीं कर रहे हासिल में आपने पहली सारी डिस्कशन नहीं ना देखी हुई ये जो है जैसे डी एक्स है ये डिफाइंड ऐसे होता है कि डी एक्स और ई एक्स दिस इज वन और डी और ये कंट्रेक्शन है इसका डॉट प्रोडक्ट कोई तरह सो इन अदर वर्ड्स को कैसे लिख सकते हैं डी एक्स एल्फा ई बीटा इस डेल्टा जैसे मैं ये कह रही हूँ कि फिर आप मैग्नीट्यूड चाहे जैसे आपने ई पी डी का मैग्नीट्यूड आर लिया है तो तो जब इसको इसके साथ करेंगे तो ये बात देगा लेकिन बेस का अलग मैग्नीट्यूड होगा नो आइडिया व्हाट बेस कम में बेसेस असल में ये मैग्नीट्यूड लिखा है ये मैट्रिक के बगैर नहीं लिख सकते Right? या अगर आप कहेंगे इनका मैग्नीट्यूड बस पता है तो फिर इनका लिख सकते हैं उस वो रिलेशनशिप यूज करें